Well. What you got? Beef jerky sticks. Chicken sticks. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? Oh, look at that. 100% Aussie beef. And also, Whoa. a packet of pig's ears. Mmm, <laughs> yum. Ooh, yummy. How you going guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. For today's job we have a D10 dozer cylinder rod in for a repair. This cylinder rod is out of the ripper lift cylinder on the machine. This lifts and lowers the ripper frame into the ground. Very, very common for these to come in for a repair. Generally we're doing the rod and the eye, but in this case the rod has survived and it is the eye that has severely failed. This rod may look similar to a previous video we've done on a 631 apron cylinder rod that had also torn out the eye pretty much the exact same way. The eye has failed due to the grease hole. The grease hole goes through the side of the eye and it is just basically a dotted line for them to fail. In 99% of cases, that's where they break and it breaks in half. I've actually never had one come in that's ripped the eye off the rod. It's generally through the grease hole. Why don't they put the grease through the pin? Well, we did have a customer want to try that against my better wishes. We did drill and tap the pin to put the grease through the pin rather than putting it in through the eye. And that pin lasted about two days. So that is not a decent repair. The amount of horsepower this machine has and how much hydraulic power it has, it's never going to work. We're gonna try and avoid having this failure happen again. The eye we're going to use is actually slightly bigger. There is enough room around the eye on the ears of the ripper frame to clear the bigger eye we're going to put on this. It's going to add extra support to the machine and hopefully it will last. So the material we're going to be using to replace the eye, it's been flame cut to a rough size that I've given them. It's a piece of a 100 millimeter high tensile plate or uh, four bananas. And I think it is about seven and a half bananas in diameter and the center hole is roughly three bananas. Big thanks to Jesse and Amy from Custom Steel Appeal. They've sent us these rulers they've uh, made for us. Not super accurate, sort of a novelty thing, which was absolutely hilarious when I unboxed them. Oh. What's that? Yeah, buddy. What is it? Banana rulers. Oh my God, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Chuck that in the top drawer of the toolbox. It'll come in handy when we're doing this American stuff. Some of you might recognize this piece of material we're gonna be using for our eye replacement. It is the same profiled shape piece of material that we use for our eye replacement video on our A-frame a while back. First thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna go set it up in the lathe. I am gonna do some facing on it, get it down to its right width. Then we need to bore out the center hole to get it within a couple of mil of the size of the bush. I'm not gonna finish bore it. I'm gonna do that in the milling machine after it's been welded and it's cooled down, just to try and relieve any surface tension that might be built up within the eye. If I do machine it to size, weld it onto the rod, there is a very high possibility the eye will actually go egg-shaped and the bush won't fit correctly. So let's go get it set up in the lathe. Thank <laughs> you. 
lot of people ask, why don't I just do all the facing in the milling machine? It's not critical what I'm doing at the moment. The ID will be trued up in the milling machine. So just ripping material off, getting this thing down to size. There's no reason why you can't put in a three jaw and just mow it off with a standard tool. It saves a lot of setup and it's just a lot quicker. So I've found. Righto guys, we're going to start boring out the eye, get it to within a couple of mil of our finished size. You might have noticed the centre hole in the eye is not in the centre and its diameter is quite small. That's because that particular eye will fit four different style of rods that we do. Rather than having four different eyes in stock, we keep one eye in stock that can be universally fitted to four different cylinder rods. I never run out of stock. I'm never waiting for parts to come in. At any given time, I can grab that eye off the shelf and turn it into whatever I like. Right, so that's as far as I'm going to go on that eye for the time being. I do need to take the eye off the old rod. It has been repaired at some stage before. It looks to have had a new rod fitted to it. I don't know how the other guy before me attached the eye. I need to now remove that eye to work out what he's done to then know my next step for the eye I'm going to replace his with. I have noticed that there is a hole coming through the end of the eye where it has broken through, which tells me he has machined up a new rod and there's been a dowel either fitted to the rod or he has machined a dowel onto the rod to then fit that to the eye. Without knowing for sure, I need to get that one apart.
Right, so we did find the little dowel that he had used. I'm now going to have to machine a hole into this, install a dowel, and I'm going to have to drill a hole in the eye, in the center of the eye, to fit it onto the rod. It's always interesting to see what you find that someone else has done.
Righto guys, so that didn't exactly go to plan. While I was trying to hold my square in there to stop the bush from falling all the way through and actually space it up from one of the faces a little bit, I accidentally slipped and I dropped the bush through and it caught itself about 10 mil outside of where it needed to. You can usually just clamp a plate to the bottom side or the top side or whatever so the bush can't pass all the way through, but I needed to space the bush nine and a half mil away from one of the faces for a seal that goes in there. Could have gone to the effort of machining something up nine and a half mil thick that I could have done that with. Done it hundreds of times without a drama, but today camera's rolling and not so lucky. That's all right, no big deal. Got 150 ton over there, says I can put it back in the spot it needs to be in. So I'm gonna get it over to the press and push it home. How you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. For today's job we have a D10 dozer cylinder rod in for a repair. <laughs> Fuck. 
Now I've got bloopers going everywhere. <laughs> right. We're just going to take the eye off this one, manufacture them a new one, fit it to the rod, send it on its way. <laughs> so we're going to go settle up in the machine and start machining. So this rod is actually off the ripper kit. Oh, fuck. It seems to stop any of the... Um, oh, fuck me. Uh, we do need to do some boring on it then. Oh, fuck. Some of you might recognise the piece... Of, it is the same profile piece. Fuck. Right, so some of you might recognise this. Fuck. <laughs> Just saves a lot of unnecessary fucking around. Um. Oh, so. Now. Now, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take twenty thousand. God, so am I starting again? So I can be the supper fan on the floor. Well, it's leeching out of the hole. <laughs> oh, you fuck. Fuck me. Four bananas. <laughs> Three bananas. <laughs> that is so good. Is that for you? <laughs> Hey, 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 no, no, no. Alright. <laughs> he thinks everything's for him. 